Good day. Today, very important topic. 1972 Collision Regulations or International Regulations for Avoiding Collisions Year 1972. This is a replacement of 1960 Colreg. By the way, Captain Rudian Paka and we are now in Colreg seamanship discussion. In a nutshell, it's very easy. 41 rules correct six sections for an excess it's defined for example part a is general rules one to three rules four to nineteen they are part b steering and sailing rules 20 to 31 it's a part c lights and shapes rules 32 and 37 is a part d sounds and light signals we have rule 38 Part E, which is exemptions, and the rule on 39, they are about uh, part E, which is compliance verifications. Six sections we have already defined for annexes. What are the four annexes? Annex 1 is positioning and technical details of lights and shapes. Annex 2, additional signals for fishing vessels. Annex 3, technical details of sound signal appliances. And Annex 4, these three signals. Let's start. Rule number 1. Now, the rule number 1 of Corrigs is part and parcel of what we call part A, general, which is part of rules 1, 2, 3. Rule 1A stipulates that these rules shall apply to all vessels, all upon the high seas and all waters connected there with navigable by seagoing vessels. It's a general statement. It's a statement that all vessels and all waters connected there with navigable by seagoing vessels. Rule 1. Nothing in these rules shall interfere with the operation of special rules made by the appropriate authority for all states, harbors, rivers, lakes, or inland waterways connected with the high seas, navigable with sea-going vessels. Such special rules shall conform as closely as possible of these rules. You know, you could have a roadstead, you could have a rivers, lakes, and the inland authority may make a special rule. This special rule shall conform it should be connected, it should be in compliance as closely as possible to these rules. That's rule 1B. Rule 1C, nothing in these rules shall interfere with the operations of any vessel rules by the government of any state with respect to additional station, line, shapes, whistles, signals of war vessel proceeding under the convoy, with respect to additional station and lights and shape also with fishing vessel engaged as a fleet. This additional station signal lines or whistle signal just as so far as possible, huh? so far as possible that they cannot be mistaken or signal authorized elsewhere under these rules. Okay. There could be a warship convoy. There could be a fishing vessel. You could be making your own operations. I don't know. You are making treasure hunting, which I don't know. And you make your own rules, signals and lights. Make sure that these rules will not be mistakenly identified by other seamen. That, or these, these lights that you are going to make and signals internally should conform as closely to the Call rate 72. You know why? Because it could create misunderstanding and it could create accident later on because you're making your own rules, which may be in some parts of these rules would would give a different meaning in your internal operation. Say a rule 1B. Traffic separation scheme, you know, may be adapted by the organization for the purpose of these rules. Because of these rules, you may have a traffic separation schemes in your own vessels, I know, in your highways, in your approaches, you can do it as per rule one of Code 72, 1B. 
Rule 1E or echo whenever the government concerned shall have determined that a vessel of special construction or purpose cannot fully cannot fully with the provision of any of these rules with respect to the number, position, range, visibility lights, as well as the disposition, characteristic, and sound signaling appliance. Such vessels shall comply with other provisions with regard to number, position, range, visibility of lights and shape, as well as to the disposition and characteristic of sound signaling appliance. The government shall determine as close as possible compliance with these rules in respect to that vessel. For example, your government, I don't know, you're making a rocket vessel <laughs> or uh, vessel special for fighting alien which is, which is new because of its special construction. Uh, you have three stories, four stories. The rules stipulate that even you make a special construction, you may have, you shall have, yeah, to determine the lights and shapes, the sound signaling as closest as possible to the original regulations of 1972. That's rule one echo. Let's go with rule number two. Well, anyhow, this would define the the five five sections of rule number one of the collision regulations of 1972. Let's go with collision. Regulation 72, rule number two, which is responsibility. The responsibility here is actually very, very important because why? There are two subsections of responsibility. Number one, nothing of these rules shall exonerate any vessel or the owner, master, or crew that offer the consequences of any neglect to comply with these rules to the with the rules and neglect of any precaution read by ordinary practice of seaman and by special circumstances of the case. Let me show you a figure, for example, to illustrate this one. You say, I press this one, view figures here and here, uh, figure 1A. It calls for ordinary practice, common sense. It calls, layman's term is common sense. The ordinary practice of a seaman shall be there or be employed to avoid any accident, to avoid any danger. In this special case, you can see there is a shoal or just a shallow water on the right side or the starboard side. Therefore, rather than crossing port to port, good seamanship to avoid the danger would tell you that you have you need to alter your course. But there's, <laughs> but there's a shoal, shallow water, so you have to alter in the port side. This is calling the ordinary practice, the common sense of a seaman. Let's go back to the rule 2B. Okay, I would press the close here. And I go uh, to, and I'm going to read the rules. In construing and complying with these rules, due regard shall be had to all dangers of navigation and collision and any special concern such as circumstances including the limitations of vessel involved okay which may be made a departure from this rule necessary to avoid immediate danger okay what this rule is all about in a nutshell it talks about your ultimate responsibility is to avoid danger not the blind obedience of this rule if your common sense if the circumstances would call for you to depart or to violate this rule just to avoid immediate danger, then do it. Let me show you this figure. The figure that I'm going to show you, which is in the 2B. For example, there are warships at your crossing, at your ahead, bow ahead, or in your port beam, uh, coming from, from your port side. The rules tell you that you can actually alter on the starboard side. Make around to avoid the danger. Or you can alter on the port side. So you can do port side, you can do starboard. What's the message? The message is you can depart from the rules of the road. The rules of Code 1972, 1972 as long as you can avoid accident. As long as you recognize that there was danger, then you make actions 
तो अब वही कोई शौक है फिल्म हमारी नोट काते दूजियन पाके वन से गैन टॉकिंग अबाउट Christian regulations of 1972. I discussed rules one and rules two, and also the summary already. In my next tutorial will be rules three up to 41. Of course, we're gonna cut them in different different uh, rules, and because we cannot discuss all these rules right away.